So uh, back here, apparently. Anyway, we um, yesterday were talking about creating graphs, and now we're going to just talk a little more about graphs in particular. We are going to talk about a feature that at least many graphs have. Which is, ooh, I might have to figure out a new whiteboard situation if, uh, if Zoom doesn't improve, we cannot keep doing this all semester. But anyway, I want to talk about intercepts today. And a graph can have an x-intercept and a y-intercept. And it might have more than one x-intercept. Um, the intercepts are intuitively named. Because when we're graphing, we've got an x-axis. And we've got a y-axis. And when we draw a graph, the graph does whatever it does. And the graph might intercept the x-axis or intercept the y-axis. So we have these extremely intuitive, or at least I think they're intuitive, terms where if the graph intersects the y-axis, it's called a y-intercept. And if no, not orange, that's a uh, other people struggle with. If the graph intersects the x-axis, that is called an x-intercept. So you see this graph has two x-intercepts and one y. Intercept. And certainly it's possible to create graphs that have no x-intercepts or one x-intercept or no y-intercept. So this isn't some kind of rule I'm showing here. It's just my introduction to the, the concept. And what we want to do today is we want to talk about finding these things. And maybe more to the point, we want to talk about why we want to find these things. Because something I would prefer not to do is turn this into a class where nobody knows why we're covering the material we're covering. If we cover something, it's because it's important. And I'm going to take these one by one. We'll start with the y-intercept, because the y-intercept is usually a more straightforward. And we'll see what I mean by that in a bit. And we'll talk about how to find it, and we'll talk about why we want to find it. Well, the first question how to find the y intercept is that we set x equal to zero because.
this vertical line, this y axis, is all of the points where x equals zero. So if we want to know when we're on this line, we set x equal to zero. And usually this is nice and straightforward because usually you've got your y on one side of the equality and your x's all on the other side. And even if your equation is kind of complicated, like maybe y is some some messy looking fraction, for example, when we set x equal to zero, well, y equals zero squared plus zero plus three. over zero squared minus five or three divided by negative five, which you could also write as negative three fifths. So in general, setting x equal to zero is quite straightforward and reading off the y-intercept is also relatively straightforward. But what's it mean? And the answer to that question is going to vary from problem to problem. But it's usually some kind of starting value. So in word problems, the y-intercept usually has some kind of very concrete meaning. Like consider the following. You are driving home for Thanksgiving. Then if Y is how far Shadron is from your home, let's say, No ever stand in Shadron State Cottage. If Y is the distance you have to travel, the distance between CSC and home, and Y, and let's give a unit here. Let's say this is being measured in miles, and Y is the hours, what am I doing? I'm still frazzled from that darn meeting. I made an error there. 
why is changing? It doesn't make sense to, for y to be the distance between Shadron and your home, because that's just what it is. It's like 300 miles or whatever. It's never going to change. I want y to be the distance between you and your home. So as you get closer to your home, y is going to decrease. And that's that X be the hours spent driving. And maybe if we have something like this, a relationship between X and Y like that, y is 200 minus 60x. So let's find the x-intercept. I say let's, let's have u. Um, what's the y-intercept here? 200 is exactly correct, thank you. Remember that to find the y-intercept, we set x equal to zero, and that gives us y is 200 minus 60 times zero. Is 200. Um, does anybody have any intuition or want to take a guess? What's that 200 mean? Just in, like, as a quick real world sentence. The miles you are from home. The miles you are from home. And um, putting a little, making it a little more specific. The miles you are from home at the start of the trip. Because remember, For setting x equal to zero, x is the amount of time we've spent driving. So when x is zero, we've spent no time driving. We're still loading our stuff into the car. So at this moment, before we set out, when we've spent no time driving, we are 200 miles from home. That is to say, we start out 200 miles from home. And this is what I meant when I said, did I write it down? Yeah. This is what I meant when I said that the y-intercept is usually some kind of starting value. And you know, you're going in the fast work to be finding y-intercepts and then interpreting them. And if you're ever struggling to interpret the y-intercept, now my advice is to remember that for setting x equal to zero and to ask yourself, Well, when we set x equal to zero, what's it mean? In this case, x is that time we've spent driving. So setting x to zero means we haven't spent any time driving or still in the parking lot. Does this, before I go to y and does this make sense to people? Does anybody want to hear more? 
So y intercepts tend to be, I don't want to say trickier, but well, they often tend to be a little trickier. I mean, even just finding a y intercept. So remember what, um, geez, my mind is fried today. We already did y intercepts, x intercepts is what I meant to say. So we are, we're looking for values where we hit the x-axis. And this is totally similar looking. If we find y-intercepts by setting x equal to zero, how do we find x-intercepts? Set y to zero. is precisely correct. Unfortunately, setting y equal to zero usually gives you an equation that you have to solve. And it might be quite a challenging equation to solve. Like, here's, you don't necessarily have to write this down because I'm not going to succeed. I'm not going to find the y-intercept, the x-intercept, geez. But like if y is x cubed plus 2x squared minus x plus 1. And we want to talk about the intercepts. Well, the y-intercept, we can find, in fact, we could probably find it mentally. We set x equal to zero. y ends up being one. We try to solve the x-intercept. Thing is suddenly take an ugly turn. Zero equals x cubed plus two x squared minus x plus one. This is an equation we probably, I mean, I couldn't solve this equation in my head. I'd have to go get a calculator or desmos or something. But because of the way these equations get set up with y by itself on the left and then your x is on the right, it's usually easy to find y intercepts but it can be quite hard to find x intercepts. So that's just something we're going to have to deal with. I mean, there's no magical solution to it. Um, let's do a problem where we can get an answer. Let's go ahead and stick with this. So let's find the x-intercept. And I've already said, well, find the x-intercept. We set y to zero. So theoretically, we've all tested into this or we've all taken 102, but I don't want to rush through these. Um, what would be a good step, a good first step 
if I want to solve that equation. Move 60x to your side. Move 60x to the other side. That works great. We get rid of subtraction. We'll use addition. 60x equals 200. How do we get rid of that 60? I hear divide, and I like it. We divide both sides by 60. And somebody gave this to me as a decimal, one or two decimal places. Uh, <laughs> I heard a lot of stuff at once and was overwhelmed. 3.33 repeat. Right, thank you. Let's just keep 3.3. So just as with y intercepts, if we're going to go through the trouble of finding x intercepts, this had better mean something. We're presumably not doing it because we think this is fun. Although if you are, um, I congratulate you, I guess. Does, does anybody have intuition about what this 3.3 3 means? How many hours, if we're using the drive hall, would be how many hours to get home? Exactly correct. How many hours to get home? And uh, again, to um, answer questions like this, you look at what we're setting equal to zero, and you ask yourself, what does this mean? Why is how far away we are from our home? So if Y is zero, we're at our home. We are zero miles away from the front door. And X is the number of hours spent driving. So this is 3.3 3 hours. And then we put together after 3.3 3 hours, we have arrived at our home. So again, this intercept means something very concrete. And again, that's usually going to be the case. Intercepts tend to be important, which is why, for example, we're going to learn the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is an intercept finding formula. And we want to be able to find intercepts. But the quadratic form of the will be later. Does anybody have any questions about what's happened today? And if not, let me get your class for you.